Sometimes I'm an ass and I light things on fire. It's usually cause I'm hot or I'm hungry or I'm tired. But anytime I look into your eyes, well, I'm suddenly twice the size. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to So Very Wrong About Games. My name is Michael Walker. Today, we're here playing Scythe Digital Edition. Once again, we're going to be playing against the AI. Everyone is busy today. Mark is busy packing and unpacking at the same time. morning Mo so let's get started let's see if the computer can beat me today unlikely but now that I've said that I will get demolished no that's not what I want to click on do, 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 do. We're gonna do all random, all should be on hard. Is there anything higher than hard? No, hard is the most. Settings all look good. Let's see who we get playing. Oh, okay, okay, white means extra objective rewards. That's a good secret objective as well. No factory cards, two territories adjacent to the factory. Or three farms. And the building bonus is going to be number of farms or tundras with your structure. So building on oil and food. lists nice and cheap so we'll start on that 
unfortunately we have no oil, but that's fine. Is there really any other opening in this game other than the rooms? No, I'm just silly, because I don't have it in the right place. How's that? Can people hear me now? I just like, you know, not having the mic anywhere near me, because then you could actually hear me. Thank you for saying something. I think it might have been a while before I realized it. So was I completely quiet? Did you get nothing from what I had said at the beginning? Sorry about that. All right. Movement done. Playing against purple. And who else? Purple, black, red. That means the whole north of us is completely empty. Interesting. Okay. Let's get some more workers. Oh, oh well, at least something was coming out of the microphone. This is all good. All right. More workers. <laughs> What just happened? No, that is not what I clicked on. Here we go. How is everyone this morning? And does everyone do the same thing I do? Do we have Twitch on on the side while you're playing another game? That is how I enjoy my Twitch. And if so, what are you playing? Time to get our double encounter reward. Give me a mech. You know that's what I want. Yes, it's just as good. We'll take the structure. And we'll put the windmill on for production. Oh, because it's a card. It's got to go where the leader is. Um, we do not want that there. We don't want it to space. There we go. This little one. There we go. I just want to change the building that I'm going to choose, that's all. Let's put the mine there. Yeah, I should have done breakfast, but I just want to do a bunch of it. It was a choice, have breakfast or do a bunch of cleaning first, and I decided to do cleaning. Lesson planning. Yes, COVID is coming to an end and children must learn.
All right, if you didn't watch me last time I played Scythe, this is as many workers as I want, just shy of losing popularity. When I produce. So that is usually where I stop. And of course, we're one oil shy. I love the fact that enlist is on our movement. This is all good for us. We almost played Scythe in real life yesterday. But I haven't yet to play the modular boards. I have them sitting in my Scythe box and have yet to try them. Also, while I have you here, if you think of a game that you want us to talk about that we have not yet talked about, you can always throw that in here now as well. All right, off we go. More encounters. More food. And I'm going to be one food short, both times, inefficient. Could have done a trade action first before I did both of those. don't think I'll make that mistake again. I think I'll do quick trade action now. Get the oil that I need. For when I do the produce, then I can do at least one upgrade. And then, of course, when I get the next encounter, they'll give me like eight oil you know that is my luck all right let's get that oil and one food that way we can go right to a move action next and get the enlist and happy Canada Day weekend for those that live in Canada. Actually, this is better overall as well, because now when I do produce, I'll have more workers in there. There we are. Three popularity deploy mech. What, what the hell? There's the food that I didn't need to get. Sounds good. And we'll go with the speed. Morning, Sue Park. And we will use this food up immediately. And we will take the enlist. And we are short on money.
think it will be a lazy Saturday today. But we try to recoup from. A crazy week. Agreed. Oh, it's definitely once again, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. When I'm done here, I'm going to decide on what overlay that uh, I'm going to use for. Putting the messages up because this means that the Twitch people can't see what uh, YouTube and vice versa. So I'm going to have to get some sort of overlay that puts the messages up on the screen, unfortunately, so all can be seen. Yeah, I have no problem. I love, I love these adaptations when they're good. I've yet to play it terrible one although that brass one so far i've not been impressed with but i'll go back to it and maybe we'll try that next time all right i think we're down to producing no more people Because if you haven't played Scythe before, it, the more workers you put in the map, the more expensive your produce action costs. So right now it's only costing us power, of which we only have one left. And if we put out even one more worker, it would start costing us popularity, which we don't have much of either. So putting out any more workers would be disastrous, in my opinion. Look at that, we have our three oil. I think we're going to take the movement because we got to get these workers out and move our leader around to make use of our encounter advantage. Then we have a good supply of food. Although taking it off, it's the only thing I'm doing at the moment and it'll get me on to something else faster. So let's do that. I don't know how many people are are on Kickstarter. It was we were going to record something on Kickstarter, but it was so quiet right now. There doesn't seem to be anything. I wonder if there's going to be a huge outpouring in the next couple of weeks because there doesn't seem to be very, anything very exciting on there at the moment. Is there anyone waiting for anything in particular to come out? Uh, I've, I've not, haven't even tried the Spirit Island app yet. Uh, Sue Park is asking which I like better, the Gloomhaven or the Spirit Island app. And I've only played the Gloomhaven one uh, a couple of times. I should really return to it. Maybe I should try that. Yeah, maybe that's what I'll do on the next one. The Spirit Island, I haven't tried it at all. But Mark and Jimbo both have, and they're the ones that are big into Spirit Island, and they don't like it whatsoever they just the, 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 the tabletop simulator mod is so much better they just go with that but i should get back to the gloomhaven and see how far they've come i wonder i should check out if they've got the multiplayer in there or how much of the campaign they've got started so far uh should i go here or I think that is the one that I can get immediately, so let's take that one. And let's get these workers out of here. And start getting the rest of our mechs out, I think. Or do we want upgrades? How deep will oil put us into em enemy territory? Hmm. Don't like that. All right, let's put them out here.
what did I say? I knew the Picard would give us a ton of oil, even though we can't afford it. Two oil and one popularity. And then I'll accidentally leave that there, more likely. Pay two dollars for an upgrade. I'll take that. But what? I am getting low on power. So I'm probably going to take that action soon. So I'll do that. And I'm about to make mechs. Although I believe I have two oil now. So if I make that cheaper now, I could do an upgrade. Oh, nice. So Mo says that all the characters are in Gloomhaven now. Digital, that is. And it looks like he thinks they're ready to launch the campaign soon. I am looking for, I like, I don't know why I'm looking so forward to Frosthaven, seeing as, you know, I'm looking up at my, you know, untouched Gloomhaven box. I think it's, even though we did play Mark's copy and we got fairly far into it, but uh, I think it's more of like the base building. It seems like it's going to be a little bit like uh, Kingdom Death, where you have like a camp and a castle and you actually upgrade it and do stuff there. I don't want to read too much into it, but... At least I'm hoping that's what it's going to be, because that is what I'm expecting. I almost missed my enlist action. Let us take money for mech, seeing as that is what we're doing. Yes, power points. Perfect time. I'm not sure if I'll if I'll enjoy the Gloomhaven app as much as the actual game, just because part of the joy of Gloomhaven is playing with other players and watching them play their decks a certain way or, you know, introduce characters that you don't normally see. And uh, controlling more than one character at a time is not something that I'm overly excited to do. I'm not happy about the fact that is directly below me. They better not attack. Black's special ability is he can attack as many times as he likes and he'll get a star for each win. Because they hate freedom. All right. Let's produce again. We've got two and less of four. So we really only need, so that'll be the last food that we need so we can get those guys out of there. We'll bring our mech back and we'll move them out. that oil up so we don't have to worry about it. Our list is coming along much quickly than I had anticipated. I wonder... Let's grab that and that. That's... Oh, it has it. So Axor says that Gloomhaven has multiplayer online right now. So yeah, I suppose. And seeing as uh, any gaming I do with Mark will be on the computer, I'll have to convince him. I'll have to give it a try and see if it's worth the trouble. True. And Sue Park, like Sue Park says, the painfulness of Gloomhaven is, is getting the box down. 
pulling out the 5,000 pieces, remembering where you left off, building the map, preparing all the cards, pulling out your character decks, remembering, you know, how you built your deck and making sure it's all intact. And then after the two hours, you get to start to play. And maybe the app will reduce that. We shall see. Let's get moving. I think this guy is trapped over here. Yes. Maybe was not the best, but that's where he is. We'll get this guy started to come back here to pick up all these workers. And we'll move. I uh, know that was that last move I, is fine. Stupid computer reminding me to do what I'm supposed to do. All right. See that? I built that windmill there on purpose to try to block the food so I wouldn't see it. See? Sneaky. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'd, I didn't mean to say it, make it sound so gruelly, but it is. I'm afraid it just is. And what the app would be good for, too, is trying out characters that, you know, you don't normally get to play. You know, it's like, oh, how does this work? And you can, like, try them out for a bit, and then... Ah, oh, that, that's too bad, purple. I'm sorry that black has decided to lose four popularity. What? so badly cripple purple a <laughs> cripple purple oh <laughs> now I am scared now I don't want to move this mech from there where how many he's got two oh all right What is the plan? Got. We will not get an upgrade on this produce. Do we really need to produce? At the moment, we do not. So instead of producing, let's trade. get the two oil that we want. Only because producing uses up our power, which we barely have any of. Trading only costs a dollar, which is, I guess, a victory point. don't need the food and I guess we would have got some iron but Where do we have some enlist tokens left? That won't make black attack. 
much power does Black have? Zero. So he's more than happy to attack me. All right. Not so scared of Black at the moment. Although I don't have that much more power. So my cards, I've got a five, two fours, a three, and five twos. A ton of cards. We will get our first star at the end of this game, at the, at the end of this turn. So these move two. I'll be back where I started, but that's fine. Oi. Um, I think why I stopped suddenly is because I realized that this is where we need to build buildings, but I don't think I want to hold a worker back there this whole time just so I can build. Last in list. So Sue, you don't you haven't seen the app yet? Or because maybe I'll I'll hop onto that when I'm done here and take another look at it. just so we can see what it looks like. All right. I think all we can do now is produce. Glowing. Yes, let's do that. We will produce. And we will only produce metal. And then we will end production. And then we will do an upgrade. Well, the only one I see using anytime soon would be this and this. All right. So everyone is still at one star. Red doesn't have any yet, so we're not terribly behind. Next movement we should although we're going over to this so I was just thinking we should go for the objective <laughs> that sounded like a follow notification that I didn't see so if someone followed thank you very much I should move this out of the way See, this is what happens when Jimbo's not here to track stuff. All right. Move those windows out of the way. I wonder if it's because it was blocking my... I'll have to work on that as well. Worked in practice. What did not work when it actually happens. All right. Moving. counter and moving all of this stuff out of here and I can go 
I should bypass that. In fact, I will bypass that and go right to the oil. And I'll go even further than that and send one of those guys over there as well. Any of that. This card is just terrible for me. I don't need any food, but I get it for free, so I might as well take it. Don't want to gain the worker because that will be hurtful. And I might as well just gain the popularity. I might as well pay it. And we will put the windmill out because it's now that we're on a slinger over here. Of course, once again, it has to be where the leader is. And it is yet another village space. Back to the card. Take that. Keep forgetting that the encounter cards, everything has to go where the leader is. So that is also not going towards the bonus. Do we want to pay two food to get one victory point? No, we do not. says the main part that it doesn't have is selfish mercenaries like the base game currently money is always pooled though items are character bound when first worn Yeah, I'm wondering too if Frosthaven has taken out those silly sort of starter cards where, you know, you need to collect all the money or open the first door or where you're not allowed to tell your teammates what you have, but you like totally imply what you have. So yeah, that'll be fun. All right. What is up next? Well, we might as well get more mechs out. So let's do that. And we don't need goods, so we can start pushing the popularity up. And we might as well take, if we attack workers, we do not lose popularity. No, no, like, yeah, no, like I've, like I've always said, I don't, I'm trying to make this stream different than other streams. I don't want the stream to be mostly about what I'm playing here. I want it to be mostly about talking about other stuff. But that being said, yes. We'll check out the Gloomhaven one after this again. Might have to install it, but it won't be long. All right, where did I leave off? Built the mech. I think that's it. The other thing I read is that they've made the Wonderlands War Tabletop Simulator mod available to everyone. 
So the thing I've been going on and on about, you can check that out. The rule book was I checked out the mod last night. The rule book's there. It seems like it might be an interesting bag builder. It just is going to look amazing. That's all I know. Am I done racing around to get these encounters? Or should I start working towards this other stuff? I think that might be a wasted action because I don't need the enlist. Although, can I do anything else? I don't have the oil. I could produce and get the oil. I love when produce and upgrade are the same action. All right. We only have two things left. It's the first time we actually produced our own oil, and we only have two upgrades left. That's crazy. Um, I don't like it when black is spreading like that. He has three stars. Look, he's got like a, he's got like a, a little outpost over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is the one thing I do not like about this app. You can There's a score preview button, and it hits that, and it tells you the score, so it calculates everything for you right now. I'm not a complete fan. But anyway, he is seven points ahead of me at the moment. But I am about to... What's the next popular? Uh, seven to 12. I'm in the seven to 12, so I need to push it even more. All right, let's do the move after all and get that encounter card or the special objective, which will be moving this mech here. smack here that should be no factory cards controlling two what am i missing zero factory cards and control at least two territories adjacent to the factory at the end of your turn i see it's just not given to me at least it's not and then the leader is there an objective left is over here i cannot get to it here remember that maybe that's why black spread everything out it's just to block me from getting more objectives well i can't go into the factory which is unfortunate i will just make sure i bring the food with me and move into here I see I, not an actual move just he can move another space I was like how can I move four units yes all right two stars go to the upgrade star Mech. I'll be one mech away from a 
fourth star. My power and popularity are nowhere close. Buildings, I already have two out, so maybe work towards that. I only need two mechs, therefore I only need four iron, so that's all the iron I need. To move them into wood production. Seems like win win. I think we got two of our buildings from Yo Yo Yo. Well red, how much power? You have nine power to four. Do I even care? Sort of. I don't want to lose my power, so no, I do not care. You want to waste seven power and go to 12? Yeah, so I was not going to. If you risk at least something, as in a card or power, then you'll always get a card back. It's true. I think it may be just the amount of expansions that are on the app right now. I forget exactly what he said, but I think that could be the main pullback for him. It doesn't have all of the good stuff yet. And I don't think it's multiplayer yet. I think it's... I'd have to look into it. Like I said, that is one I don't have, nor... Um... So yeah, so Sue Park says he can't understand how Mark would prefer the Spirit Island on Tabletop Simulator versus Steam because the Steam apps have rules enforcement which moves the game along and prevents incorrect moves. That's what I was answering there. Like I said, I just think the table, uh, the Steam app does not have all the expansion and I think it's only single player at the moment. So you pick up everything, move to wood country, bring me wood, I mean you, and you, vengeance will be swift and powerful. I gotta play more Spires End as well. I think that'll be might be the next thing because it's like a, an actual physical thing to play on here. I think that would be fun, as opposed to digital stuff all the time. Actually, maybe that's what I'll do. I think it will keep that window up, and I'll side window my steam and make sure gloomhaven is ready 
so we can load that app up when we're done and take a look at it. All right, let's build our last mech and get more popularity. What else can we get? We're gonna get our upgrades, which is one. I'm sure we're gonna win a fight. We might get our popularity up to, we'll see. Let's get the middle. Get a factory card. Why? Because factory cards are fun. And the middle is worth three hexes at the end of the game. And I have a feeling that it's coming sooner than I think. So we'll throw leader in with some defense and we will spread out a little bit and knock black down a little bit because we don't lose popularity for doing that. Well, we do have a ton of combat cards. So these, some of these are nice because it's paying combat cards to get stuff. So we might as well take one of those. One combat card for straight up three victory points believe that is the one plus the art on these uh, factory cards is amazing think that is that. No more list. End turn. Oh yes, let's see. If I can get that to come up. It doesn't look like it's going on the screen. Gloomhaven. Install. That is installing, so it should be ready, and we're done. All right, we will produce only for the fact of getting our last upgrade. And some wood. What to do now? Hmm. My thinking was 
that we have two buildings left and we can push our power up a lot higher. And we'll get three victory points every time we do that. And we might as well Black suddenly has 12 power. He also has a 5. He, oh, he came in with 2. That I did not see. I could have sworn I looked over here and did not see. Two slots for cards. That is okay. He was probably a little bit grumpy. <laughs> I pushed his worker out over here for no particular reason. So now I'm going to have to do it to all of his other workers. I was just going to do this movement, but I think I will do this movement. And instead of moving these guys far, I'll move them to these hexes. So I control them. And the workers there already control, so you will work. You will push this guy out. We check the no, let's not check the score. Let's uh risk it and hope that we're in the lead. Well, we know black can't move again. That is the game. Oi. Take that. Oh, oh, no. Oh, one point. Yes. Once again, computer, you have been by only four points this time. A lot closer than it usually is. All right, so that is Scythe. Let's see if I can lawlessly and seamlessly transition into gloomhaven one moment here let's see oh, it's still downloading give this a couple minutes it's true uh tabletop simulator can be very clunky there are 
quite a few mods out there that people have put a lot of work into. Like if you've watched any of our videos that we did on uh, Spirit Island, the mod for Spirit Island is amazing. He's done some fantastic work there where it calculates, you know, where you've put the pieces and adds, you know, modifiers and stuff. And it's all scripted out. It's a great job. And some, some table top simulator mods are fully scripted, like the fairy tale and the fantasy realms and many others. But like you said, some are just here are the pieces off you go. So we're just waiting a second. We're going to take a quick look at the Gloomhaven app. I don't think we're going to play it very much. We'll see how much it uh, grabs me, but probably not for too, too long. There we go. All right. We'll see if I click this and nope one moment ah uh, see semi semi seamless here we go gloomhaven So I, I love Discord. Do not get me wrong. I just don't like the the chat system in Discord. Or like access. Audio is okay. There's music too loud in the game. Is everything all right? Because like I said, it's something I have not played yet, so I don't know. Just do the how to play so we can see what it's all about. Leader of mercenaries based in the town of Demon Gate. The region is in peril, overrun with all manner of monsters, leaving people. Yes, belated happy happy Canada Day. It is Canada Day weekend here in Canada. Which to me means nothing. Work is work and I just got back from there and it is once again crazy. Your guild's objective is to restore the trade routes between these villages by vanquishing the evil that plagues the land to make a lot of gold doing so. Round summary. Not reading this whole thing. Not sure what happened. But, oh, I see that they, they want me to click on the next one. Oh, it's like literally read a rule book. I thought it was going to be an interactive how to play. It is read through a full rule book. Okay, then. Let's close that and we will just. Guildmaster did not say what Guildmaster was at the beginning. New adventure. Here we go. Normal guild name. It's the swag. Full tutorial. Well, here we go. Now 
now we might get uh, an interactive tutorial. Welcome, Guildmaster. I am the Guild Trainer. I'm here to guide you through setting up your own mercenary guild. Actually, that reminds me, maybe I will change this stream information to say Gloomhaven. And it actually worked, which is nice. All right, before we get into action, you will acquaint yourself with how to adjust the view of the battlefield. Yes, yes, WASD. Can you rotate? I wonder. Zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. Thank you. Ability cards. At the beginning of each round. Yes, we'll get some cards. We are playing the brute. Grab and go, trample, provoking roar. Indicator is currently great. It's negative tutorial for now. Let's just select two cards the brute has available. Select Trample. I see, they've given us two cards. See how the question mark next to the brute's portrait at the top of the screen has changed into a number. This shows his initiative. All right then. Since there is no characters visible right now, it will immediately be the Brute's turn anyhow. Select Grab and Go. I guess that is my second card. End selection. So in Gloomhaven, for those who have not played before, you have a hand of cards equal to your health. So you start the turn with all of your cards. And you're going to choose two of them. One of them will put on one side which will be your initiative and the other one will be your second card you will use the top of one card and the bottom of the other and after you've selected that can change you're not locked into the top and bottom when you select them so if you're going later in the round and stuff changes then you might end up switching what you will use so it's, that's the interesting part of the game is like you sort of have to you know roll with the punches and change what you're you know what you've planned by putting out more generalized cards time to choose some actions each half the card maybe I should have you know, explained it because they're about to you know now I'm gonna say it twice you're about to go through it compromise of one or more abilities yes yes you get two actions per turn you can pick any of the four halves on the left and use your first action note you must use the opposite side of the card on your second hey I just said that game why are you repeating me for example, you can choose either the top, grab and go, yes, we just talked about this. There is nothing for the brute to do in this room, so you'll want to proceed through the door and see what lies beyond. Grab and go's bottom half lets the brute move of four hexes, which is enough to get through the door. Let's use that. Select the bottom half. Go to the door. Open the door. Oh my god. There is a bandit guard there. I'm so frightened. Um, this room contains your first enemy, a bandit guard. Like player characters, monsters also select actions for their turn. Let's find out what this bandit is planning to do this round by hovering over his portrait. So he's going to move one, and he'll attack for three, plus or minus the card he draws. Yeah, I, I did that, thank you. Uh, we'll also have a rover to move and attack, whereas player character gets to do a two actions, blah, blah, blah. Notice how this bandit has lower initiative than the brute. Uh, he has 70, we have 72, so we'll be going first. As is currently the Brute's turn, however, you'll get to finish your turn before the bandit, bandit can act. And we still have a movement left, and then we can do our attack three, pierce two. I wish I didn't say anything about rotating the camera. Do the 
cookies. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Uh, it is it is uh, limited though. Interesting. All right. Pack three, pierce two, which means yes. If he had, now you start grabbing gold. Select the half for trample. Will do. Select the bandit guard as the target. Why does it auto select if there is only one target? Confirm. Whenever you attack, an attack modifier is drawn from your character's modifier deck, and that value is applied to your attack. So this is, I think, uh, the best part about Gloomhaven, is that every character has their own modifier deck, which you can slowly modify during the campaign and make it your own sort of special thing, and that is the part I really enjoy. But anyway, I digress. Moving on. In this case, you see above the bandit guard has a zero modifier that was drawn your attack. Still deals its base value of three damage. So I drew a zero. Where does it say that, though? In this case, you can see above the bandit guard. Oh, up here. All right. For this tutorial, we will only have plus zero modifiers in effect. Oh, good. I'm glad I said it's the best thing and you totally negated that part of the game. Thanks, tutorial. Um... To keep things simple, we'll explore other attack modifiers later. <laughs> so we will end our turn and the bandit will go. That is the bandit's turn. As we saw on his card earlier, he tends to move and then perform a melee attack 3 damage. Sorry, what is going on here? I totally, after... Uh, started this I did not uh, here we go YouTube or Twitch like special effects from an 80s movie the background looks like special uh, yeah I suppose and Axtra says the reason it doesn't auto select the target when it's the only one because you're actually performing the attack is optional sometimes you don't want to do it yeah that's true 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 I suppose I, I was more like you know in the tutorial it should auto but I guess it should get you used to not actually <laughs> selecting it's like you said a lot of things that like, uh, will explode when you attack them and if you just move beside something that you didn't realize it was there then uh, or maybe that could be an only lion's gate ouch while monsters always take damage directly to their hit points whenever a player character is damaged you are presented with three options. Let's see if it, how it says this. Firstly, you can simply take the damage to your character's point total. However, this reduction to z if this is reduced to zero, the character is exhausted, which means you can no longer act in this scenario. If all of your mercenaries are exhausted, you will lose this scenario. Secondly, you can choose to burn two discarded ability cards instead of receiving the damage if you burn a card it can no longer be covered by resting however if you were to burn two of the brute's cards here he would have enough cards for the following turn he would be exhausted yes because they've given us two cards so helpful finally you can choose to burn one available card this option is grayed out because we don't have any, it's, everything is in our discard. So we're going to just sit there and take another hit from it. Anyway, it is usually wise to take the damage over burning cards, if possible, lest you run out of cards to finish the scenario with. Because when you in Gloomhaven, if you've played all your cards, you do have to lose at least one of them to get them back, and then that slowly burns you out of the game. For now, let's opt just to take three damage as the brute has enough health to survive. It says you. Select receive damage. The bandit's turn is now over as he wants the last, as he was the last character to act. It is the end of the round and a new round begins. Where have they put my my hit points? I think that would be one thing that would be. Anyway, moving on. During the ability card selection, if you have at least two discard cards, you may perform a long or a short rest to recover some of them. All of the ability cards are currently discarded. A long rest doesn't 
long rest it doesn't count as a card as such he will have to rest to continue short rest will build, burn one discarded card at random uh, for the rest of the scenario but it will recover all of the other discarded cards whereas the long rest you get to pick uh, it takes the whole turn and using and you can select two of the ability cards giving the character an initiative 99 however you not only get to choose which card to burn oh you also heal too correct and it refreshes all your item cards as well interesting uh, choosing to long rest here would be certain death if the bandit draws an attack card for the round as the brute neither has health nor spare so let's choose a short rest click the short rest button we'll do maybe you should there it is over there let's not put all the buttons in the same place let's move them around all right short rest yes and it tells you what random card was selected it gets burned we picked up two new cards exchange now we have these both the brute and the bandit are near death so it is crucial to go as early as possible in the round to get the first attack remember the first card you choose determines the brute's initiative so let's choose provoking roar to maximize the Yes, so wants us to do... Oh yes, it's low. Low is the initiative. Oh, I see what it's trying to say. I got... It's usually always the... Like Mark says, we need to get this right. You know, is a low number means good initiative, or is a high number? We need to get this down to the science. You know, this flip-flopping back in games is not... It's not right. Now that we're in the same room as the bandit, we can see that enemies draw their ability cards each round after the players. So you won't know what they will be doing or what their initiatives will be until this point in each round. It appears the bandit was planning to once again use a move and attack, but because you chose to act quickly with initiative 10, he won't have those active until the brute's turn is due to a slower initiative of 50. Let's get him. Select the top half of the trample. It's back three pierce two. Will do. Select target. Confirm targets. <laughs> Take that, you smelly bandit. Then, like Gloomhaven, every time you kill something, it drops loot. But then you have to either move on to it or play a loot card. I think we'll stop it there. This was just to sort of look at it. I think they've done, it seems to be a lot smoother than when I played it the first time, which was like probably almost a year ago. So I will definitely be coming back to this. The gameplay audio is loud. All right, I can better turn that, turn that down. Thank you for telling me. Sorry that it was so loud. All right. Thank you for listening. I will see you guys next time. This has been a sneak peek of Gloomhaven. Let's uh, see who is on right now, and we will raid someone. Like the good Twitch streamers that we are. I will send you to, let's see, nine viewers. They're playing, I, I want to give this a try. I think the. I think it's on uh, Tabletopia Adventure Mart. As it's a game I have not played yet, I definitely want to try it. Pandemic Legacy, I won't send you over there in case you guys don't want spoilers. So let's raid these guys. No problem. Like I said, I'm going to try to get on here more now that uh, things have changed up a little bit. And like I said, we'll try to get uh, some Spire's End played.
Yes, just roll the dice at gmail.com. Correct. I don't think it will let me. So we have eight seconds. So we have eight seconds. Oh, so we have eight back. seconds. All right, that's that. See you later.